Long ago, in a distant land, well, not that distant, it was just Allahabad, there was a five-year-old kid who was stoked with a massive red motorcycle. Um, if you're not there yet, that kid was me, and that massive motorcycle was actually a petite, compact, yes, the Road King 250. It was my father's first motorcycle ever. So naturally, this name, yes, the, has never left my mind, but the brand, as we know, pulled the plug on production in the late 90s. But now, thanks to classic legends, Yezdi is back with three new motorcycles named quite simply the Roadster, the Scrambler and the Adventure, because that's what they are. The Yes These Are the second big launch for classic legends after the Java motorcycles were introduced in November 2018. Like the Javas, we have three new Yes These and the three promise purpose-built characteristics. Starting with the Roadster, a road-focused machine good for the city with the least ground clearance and suspension travel front and rear, the Roadster is the most accessible of the lot with a very relaxed disposition. But if I can just take a moment to talk about the seating position on the Roadster. And I bring this up because it's a very comfortable place to be. Uh, it's very compact and very accessible even for shorter riders. Uh, I'm five feet five and you can easily see my feet are planted well. But the thing is, I wish the handlebar positioning was a little different. So it's the placement of the handlebars that I think could have been better and it would have helped make the rider triangle a a little bit more practical and comfortable. The foot pegs as well, just a notch forwards would have helped. The Scrambler on the other hand is quite the best of both worlds. It feels sprightly on tarmac and is capable of mild off-roading or if sliding on dirt is your style. Plus it offers a better ground clearance of 200mm and greater suspension travel as well. Moving to the adventure, we're happy to report that it offers friendly dimensions so people under 5 feet 5 will feel at home. It has, in true ADV fashion, a wide raised handlebar and large comfortable seats. Of the three, the suspension setup on the Adventure could feel squidgy, but on roads full of undulations and on off-road trails, it remains composed at all times. I may not be the best rider on loose surfaces, but I am convinced the Adventure is capable of a lot more than I can push it for. Well, in terms of design, well, there's very different kinds of motorcycles, so not comparing one to the other. But I'm not really much of a fan of what the Roadster looks like. In my mind, the Scrambler wins it in terms of styling and everything. When you look at the Adventure though, you may be reminded of a certain motorcycle. You will be forgiven if you mistake it for a Himalayan, perhaps. Just saying. Like I said, there different kinds of motorcycles and I have to say that yes they have done a very good job in using the same engine on three motorcycles but you get onto three of these and you can very easily tell the difference uh, among them. Of the three, um, the adventure definitely feels the torquiest and it's got gladly more grunt in the lower end of the RPMs. For the Roadster though, I have a bit of a niggle. I think it's asking for downshifts quite often. I mean, I understand the kinds of roads we have here. There were, there's plenty of gradients and, well, bad roads involved, but I don't expect a motorcycle to ask for first gear when I'm rolling in second. It should be able to pull through with an engine that big. But yeah, that was a problem that I faced in the Roadster. The Adventure does not do that. The Adventure felt pretty good on the throttle response. 
However, with the adventure, what I felt was you do feel that weight when you sit on it, when you try to move it, even when you're on the move, you can feel the bike pulling that weight through. Plus, uh, well, the front end, I think, gets upset on the adventure quite easily. That's probably to do with maybe a lighter front end. But overall, the adventure rode just, I, in my mind, just brilliantly. But the best one, I have to say, is the Scrambler. Very well balanced in every way. The way it responds on the throttle, uh, the suspension setup, the braking, it's quite nippier. I mean, I would expect very nippy and nimble handling from something like a Roadster, but the Scrambler, I believe, it does a better job at twisty roads such as these. The same 334cc single cylinder engine produces varying power figures on the three for which classic legends made mechanical and electronic changes. The pistons and camshafts have been designed differently for the three based on weight optimization and profile. Most of the grunt though kicks in on the higher side of the RPMs, but some bias towards the lower end would have been preferable. But the exhaust sound, not to mention, is great, making the bikes easy on the eyes and on the ears as well. While Scrambler is the lightest of them at 182 kilograms, the Roadster and Adventure weigh in at 184 and 188 kilograms. Managing this weight, however, is not really a problem since the seat height on the three ranges only from 790 to 815 mm. All three bikes get a 320 mm disc up front and a 240 at the rear with dual channel ABS and three modes to choose from for the Scrambler and Adventure. Braking is appropriately bitey and rather gradual. In terms of features, the highlight has to be the LCD display with Bluetooth connectivity and turn-by-turn -turn navigation which is standard equipment on the Adventure. Plus, there are handlebar mounted USB and Type-C charging points on the Adventure and Scrambler. This may have been a very limited ride experience for us with the three bikes and a more detailed review will be possible when we spend more time with them later on. But we're really glad that Yesdi has made a strong comeback with three very promising products and now there's just so much more choice in the segment. And also, the Yesdi Scrambler is now the most affordable Scrambler out there. So to sum it all up, all of us are really glad that Yesdi is back. Some of us may be disheartened that none of these motorcycles look like that quintessential Yesdi that we grew up looking at. But then, this is decades later, everything needs to evolve, motorcycles need to get more modern, more in with the times, and these are like a great sequel to a good movie. About the prices, I'm just gonna leave them somewhere here because I'm not good with remembering numbers. And to say the least, the pricing is kind of brilliant. They are affordable and they offer different characteristics. Which one should you go for? Well, about that, it really depends on what you expect from your next purchase. If you want a very road-focused bike, maybe the Roadster is the one you're looking for. If you want to off-road, right here. And if you want something fun, filtering through traffic or going on mountain twisties, the Scrambler is the one you want. Now, of the three, I reckon, you know what? I'm not going to pick which is the best one. Scrambler! Scrambler then.